We got Battletoads Zit Juice today. No, nothing about this one. Mm. Smells familiar, but I can't put my finger on it. So I looked up the flavor. It says it's green mango. Ugh. I don't like it. <laughs> I'm the most brutally honest guy in the world, and G Fuel knows that, and occasionally I get a flavor that I don't like, and this one I think is terrible. I can't say it tastes at all like a mango, and to me it tastes almost like perfume. I'm gonna give this like a 3.1 out of 10. Please don't drop me. Anyway, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video, and happy Tuesday. In today's video, I'm going to be going through another request that you guys have asked me to do, and that is saying what I think every team's priority should be this offseason. Couple of quick things before we hop into the video. One, head over to gfuel.com, use code Wyatt's World, save yourself a discount on any G Fuel products. And two, if you're 18 years or older, head over to Prize Picks, the daily fantasy app, where code Wyatt's World will match up to $100 of your first deposit. Always play responsibly, and let's get into the video. All right, so this is set up easy peasy on the day. We got one category and it's the off season. And our first team is going to be the Browns today. Now, please understand guys, I'm not a fan of every single NFL team, meaning my takes in reality are probably two different things. And if you are a fan and what I say is completely off, don't shoot me. That being said, uh, the Browns happen to be one of the weirdest teams in the league for me. Honestly, I think maybe a, a defensive end, especially with Jadavion Clowney now. I don't know if he's coming back or what, but he's talking all that crap about Miles Garrett. Now I think he's fine, but now he wants to get out. Probably going to need somebody else there. Otherwise, maybe the secondary. I do not think they need to attack the offense at all or their line. As far as I'm concerned, they're both good. Up next, we got the Chargers, a head coach. <laughs> Imagine. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say a corner for me. Just because they only have Asante Samuel Jr. JC Jackson looked terrible last year. That was not assuring that he's gonna have a good future there. But if they weren't gonna go after a corner, then maybe someone on their D-line, as silly as that sounds, because against the run last year, they were terrible. Next team we got is the Bears. This could go a couple of different ways. I would want a wide receiver, I would want protection, and I would obviously probably want a linebacker again because they got rid of Roquan. Judging off of what I've seen, I think their receivers honestly are probably the least of those three that is needed because Claypool and Mooney can function, but they can't function if Fields doesn't have time. All right, moving on, we got the Rams. Uh, a lot, but I would probably start off with either an O-lineman or a corner if Jalen Ramsey leaves. As far as we know, Donald and McVay are coming back. If they continue to roll with Stafford, their offense is going to look, you know, pretty similar as to how it started last year, which should have been really good. But a lot of the issues started with Matt Hatton having no time and getting smacked and that can't start and we also see cam Akers might be good too so you get him protection he's only gonna do better moving on we got the giants and i'm gonna say weapons and that's my only thing weapons for daniel jones because that poor guy has to go home and watch all these other quarterbacks have fun yet he has to go out and play with walmart employees like it's not fair to him assuming daniel is coming back that that is what my priority would be after re-signing him Get him some weapon. All right, moving on. We got the Colts and uh, honestly health because I could say head coach, but a health is more important than a head coach right now. That team could be so good, but they're always so banged up. And honestly, if they're going to continue with the notion that they're going to give Jonathan Taylor a million carries every year, they might want to invest in another O-lineman. Following them, we've got Dallas. And uh, for one, apparently Dak Prescott is your top priority now, giving him shock therapy and finding out what went wrong. But after you're done with that, you're going to need an offensive coordinator now because if you guys haven't heard, Kellen Moore is gone. Gonna be weird to see that Dallas offense with someone else. After that, we'll go to the Raiders, and uh, obviously their top priority is figuring out who is gonna be throwing the ball there next season, but their priority after that, if I was them, would be re-signing Josh Jacobs, figuring out a way to get him to come back. Now, it should be pointed out, the Raiders haven't granted Derek Carr permission to seek a trade yet, and I'm not sure what they're getting at, but if they think that he's gonna come back, they're insane, because if he were to do that, he'd be the most forgiving person on planet Earth. After Vegas, we have got the Vikings, and uh, mine and my dad's opinion were pretty close, so I'll kind of combine them, but I did ask my dad. I said gut the whole defense. My dad basically said the same and then said they also need a center, which is true. And my dad is also disgusted with the idea that the Vikings are probably going to hire Mike Patine. Okay, on to the Cardinals, and uh, a lot. Head coach? 
Figuring out what's gonna happen with DeAndre Hopkins, a running back, defensive end now that JJ's gone, quarterback to start the year, you guys are kind of in shambles. Up next, we got the Steelers, and my priority with them, honestly, would just be developing Kenny Pickett. Yeah, an O-lineman is another thing that they could need because that could help Najee Harris out a ton too, but the development of your potential future quarterback right now is, I think, your biggest priority. After the Steelers, we got the Texans. What's there not to get? I mean, I'm not even trying to be mean, but other than a running back in your left tackle, like, virtue you could use any position under the sun. You could also use a head coach. You could use an offensive coordinator, a defensive coordinator, an owner, a general manager, a fan base. Just kidding. You guys don't deserve that. After the Texans, we got the Patriots. So I was going to say offensive coordinator, but they got Bill O'Brien and that's monumental, honestly. So now I'm going to say wide receiver because the Patriots are a team that can, you know, basically function with whatever is given to them. So imagine if they were to go out and actually get like someone who's really good, like DeAndre Hopkins or Odell, you know, an explosive playmaker like they could be an electric team and that would be weird from the Patriots because they are everything but electric all right that brings us to the Bucks. all right first priority figuring out what's going on with Tom Brady second priority especially assuming Tom Brady's gone is getting a new head coach Todd Bowles is absolutely terrible like he's not good he's basically only the head coach there anyway because Tom Brady runs the team they just need someone to fill in but like his head coaching record is 34 and 50 like it's not a conspiracy the guy literally is awful now we're on to Detroit and anything to buff that secondary. Just just get some help defensively out there, guys. You can't be letting up 400 passing yards a game. After the Lions, we got the Saints. This is like Cleveland with me. It's it's weird. I don't really know. I want to believe Andy Dalton will be their starting quarterback, as he should. Honestly, I think he played pretty good last year. Receivers are fine. I, I think realistically, my first priority is speaking of receivers would be getting rid of Michael Thomas to get somebody else who can help your team benefit. After the Saints, we got Seattle. Much like Detroit, secondary help. Offensively, you're fine. Maybe your old line could use a buff, but your secondary is what's losing you more games than anything. Seriously, other than Quandre Diggs, like, it looks like a disaster. Next up, we got the Broncos. This one's simple, a head coach, and take your time. Make sure you're gonna get the right guy. Don't get some idiot who's gonna come in and take one of the most talented rosters that you could possibly be given and fail with it. Up next, we got the Chiefs. Uh, you're going to the Super Bowl, so your offseason priority will either be repeating the reason you won or trying to fix the reason you lost. All right, moving on, we got the Ravens. Uh, number one, your priority is re-signing Lamar, and then you can go to getting him a weapon. And that's where I sit with them. I don't think John is going to be on the hot seat like a lot of people say he is. Like, I, I know he's insane at times, but he does more good than bad to that team, and it's no secret there. Okay, next we got the 49ers. I don't mean to be boring here, but like health is the only thing that comes to my mind. Like I'm sure they have a hole. I just don't see it. And yeah, we can look back at the Philly game, guys, especially if you saw my TikTok, I was kind of just poking jokes, but when reality kicks in there, if Purdy wouldn't have gotten hurt, I don't think that game would have went how it did. And their defense, it's pretty hard to not get exhausted when you're on the field the whole game. After them, we've got the Eagles. Same goes for them as I said about the Chiefs. Uh, honestly, they're going to be either trying to repeat what they're going to do in the Super Bowl or they're going to be trying to fix what lost in the game. After Philly, we got the Jags. Personally, I'm either going for the secondary or the offensive line over the offseason. You got to remember, you guys are getting Kelvin Ridley. Your offense is going to cook. So either focus on getting Trevor proper protection or getting somebody on defense who can help you sustain a lead. After the Jags, we got the Panthers. Running back, quarterback, protection. I mean, you can kind of go wherever you want there. They got Frank Reich. Like I said, I kind of like that pick or move, I should say. But uh, as far as what they need, it could be a number of things. And I know Dante Foreman ain't that bad, but I'm not convinced he's, you know, the greatest guy in the world. He is really hit or miss. After the Panthers, we got the Titans. Uh, there are a couple of different things. The quarterback situation there definitely isn't sturdy. Defense could use a buff wide receivers could use a buff oh line could use a buff honestly i don't even know who the hell their tight end is maybe start there after the titans we got the falcons and i actually have words from my falcon friend this guy's a diehard i wanted to get the correct words he says 100 percent the pass rush in his opinion i know a lot of people are worried about the quarterback position but the falcons were once again last in the league with pass rush falcons are top five in available cap space this offseason which is great so they really need to pick up a couple solid pieces for their d-line or linebacker positions whether it be from free agency or in the draft so there you have it and i don't think anybody's gonna disagree with that 
Up next, we got the Bills. Try to dislodge the enormous, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm gonna go defensive coordinator here though. I might sound harsh and I know Leslie's done a decent job over the last couple regular seasons, but three years in a row, he has had a postseason meltdown where we've gotten just absolutely mutilated. It's time for a change on the coordinator side of defense, I think. And maybe I'm wrong for saying that, but that's how I feel right now. Moving on, we got Green Bay and listen to me on this one. A quarterback is not their top priority, but Aaron Rodgers is. They need to get rid of him. They know what they want to do. They have Jordan Love. Honestly, I, I think they should be comfortable with him. Let him go. And what I mean by that is let him play. I, I, they need to focus on getting rid of Rodgers. This is like the fifth straight year he's caused a commotion. Both sides need to separate. Get him out of there. After Green Bay, we got the Bengals. Uh, O-line? But other than their offensive line, a cornerback. Because all jokes aside, Eli Apple, like, he actually sucks. Yeah, that's what the problem is about him talking all this crap, is that he's not even good. He doesn't help that team. He is terrible. After the Bengals, we got Washington. Selling the team and firing Ron Rivera should be your number one priority before you do anything else. After Washington, we've got Miami. Well, Tua's health for one, but, uh, DC, because I thought they had Vic, but no, they don't have Vic? Listen, you guys have a good defense. You just need someone who knows how to run that. And ending the list, we've got the Jets. So obviously a quarterback is a problem and concern there and Aaron Rodgers could fix that. But otherwise, my thing would be forming and articulating that offensive line because when Mekhi Becton comes back and you got Vera Tucker there who is very underrated, you could have the closest thing to a literal brick wall as possible. But you need those two guys to come back healthy and you need to know where to put them. Stop moving people around. Let them go. And that is my list of my off-season priorities for every single NFL team. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, you already know what to do. Comment, like, subscribe. I wanted to catch you off guard there, and I hope I did. Seriously, though, comment, like, subscribe. Turn the bell on. I do my best to post on this channel every single day. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. This is where I'm going to end it. As always, have a good one, and I will see you in the next video.